That's sad, ain't it? Them poor people out in Hollywood, bless their heart. James chapter number two. Right quick, just a few minutes tonight. It's going to be brief. Uh, We've got a lot to do tonight, and uh, I've not even got my clothes out of the car, all of them. And I've got a, a lot to do this week. Um, we'll look at um, a verse here tonight and bring you a, a chapter. This is a scripture that a lot of Baptist preachers sort of shy away from because it, at face value, seems to contradict some of what we believe. But it don't if it's rightly divided. And I'm not even going to give you the doctrinal meaning of this scripture tonight. I'm going to preach it in a practical sense. Look at verse number um, Oh, let's see, verse 16. Let's see, verse 16. James chapter 2 and verse 16. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac he offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. My goodness, what a vivid illustration. He said, just like your body without the spirit if, I, if the spirit left my body right now, my, soul, my body would just fall over here dead in the floor. Wouldn't be worth nothing to nobody. He said, just like that body, without the spirit's dead, that's how faith is without any works to go with it. Dead, being alone. I want to preach tonight just quickly on the subject, faith that works. Faith that works. A little play on words there. But you know the Bible said faith without works is dead being alone. And I want to give you a few stories of faith in the Bible. The truth is tonight, the Bible said uh, without faith it is impossible to please God. I don't care how good you think you're doing, you know what God is, is responds to and is pleased with? Faith, faith. Uh, it, it, it does, you, don't, you don't have to be popular uh, to please God. You don't have to be rich to please God. You don't have to live in a certain part of the country to please God. You don't have to be talented to please God. You don't have to be good looking to please God. You don't have to be educated to, believe, to please God. But you have to have faith to please God. That's the only way you can please Him. You know what, the, you know what pleases the Lord? When you believe Him. The Bible said Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Let's think about that little thought here tonight. And I think what I'll do is take a minute tonight and give you a faith lift. How about that? Uh, uh, we put that on the sign one time. It said, come in and have a faith lift. And uh, we can't talk plain, but I mean, you, get the, you get the gist there. Uh, you come in tonight and get your faith lift. Faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the only way you're going to ever have more faith is spend more time in this book. Put your face in the book. You want like Facebook? Put your face in this book. And I guarantee you if your faith is weak here tonight, you read 20 chapters a day every day this week, come back next Sunday, and your faith will be stronger. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Tonight, 
I just want to give you just name these little stories off and, and we'll go. Number one, a father offered up his son by faith. There in Hebrews 11, it tells about it. Back yonder in Genesis along the 22nd, 3rd, 4th, long in there, that chapter where it tells about Abraham. Now, Abraham was one of them characters in the Bible where God, the one they call the friend of God. And one day God told Abraham, he said, your, your wife, Sarah, is gonna have a son. And everybody knows he's almost 100 years old. Now, you tell a 100-year-old man and a 99-year-old man and a 100-year-old 91-year-old woman, they're going to have a baby. It's going to be hard to believe that. And Sarah laughed. But the Bible said that Abraham believed God. Now, they wanted a son for years and years and years and years. Many of you have been through that, where you really want a baby. You wanted a baby. Couldn't have a baby. I've dealt with many, many couples who maybe somebody wanted a child, couldn't have a child, and then they finally did. That's the way this was. But I'm talking about 90 years old. 90 years old. 99, Abraham. 85, when, when, when the Lord spoke to him, and, and way up yonder, 90 years old. And God told Abraham, he said, you're gonna have a son about this time next year. Well, that day finally come. And the, Sarah brought forth that son, named him Isaac. And he was just wonderful. Abraham said, hallelujah, the God of glory fulfilled his promises. Lord, you did what you said you are gonna do. Hallelujah, glory to God. Woo, we've got a baby. Sarah loved that little baby. Sarah, they grew him up. They, they raised him right. They took him to church every Sunday. They read the Bible. They prayed. And one day Isaac was getting on up there, I don't know, uh, a few years ago, maybe, maybe 12. I don't know how old Isaac was. He's getting up there just still a child. And God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I need you to do something for me. He said, yes, sir, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And God said, take your son, your only son, and go out into the wilderness and make, make a sacrifice. And Abraham got up that morning and took that boy, Isaac, his only son that he had waited for all them years and went out uh, to sacrifice to God. Now, folks, I don't know if you ever thought about that story much, but that boy, he had waited for him all. Any of you men in here got a son? Is there anybody, are you guys that have sons in here? He took his only son that he had waited for all them years, and God said, I want you to offer your son for a sacrifice. And Abraham looked up. I mean, you know what most people said? They said, there ain't no way. I'll not do that. God, that ain't right. You gave me this son. You know what the Bible said? Abraham believed God. Now, buddy, there's you some faith. Amen. Abraham believed God. And the best thing you can do, God, and your children is trust God with them. Trust God to work in your child's life. Trust God to work in your son. Trust God to get a hold of your daughter. Trust God to get a hold of your son. And Abraham takes a, a Isaac like that, one of the most amazing stories in the whole Bible. That's one of the most amazing stories of faith I've ever, ever heard of. Abraham takes his son. He said, son, come on up here on the mountain. Isaac said, where are we going, daddy? He said, we're going to offer a sacrifice to the Lord, son. And he said he had a knife. He had the, the wood, you know, and everything. And they went up on top of that mountain. They got up there and they looked around and Abraham looked there and he fixed that wood. He got ready to start the fire. He got all that. And Isaac said, daddy, here's the wood. Here's the fire. Where's the sacrifice? Poor little old boy did not know that it was gonna be him. And Abraham looked around at that boy. He said, son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Now, Abraham was led by the Spirit to say that. How prophetic was that, people? I mean, Brother Abraham said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. And that's just exactly what God did. Many, 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 many years later, God in the flesh came, the son, and provided the sacrifice. And Abraham said, son, I want you to lay down right here. I don't know how that conversation went, but they was like this right here. Abraham stretched that little old boy there like that. He tied his arms down. Can you imagine? He said, daddy, what are you doing? Daddy, what I, am I this? Daddy, 
Why am I doing this? He said, son, God has told me uh, to go for a sacrifice. Now to the world tonight, that's what makes people say, oh, that's crazy. What kind of God? Well, you just don't know the right God. That's your problem. God told Abraham, I want your son. That's a picture. Abraham's a picture of God the Father. Isaac's a picture of God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, sacrificing for our sin. And brother, he, remember, I have heard people say, oh, Abraham knew God. Uh, Listen, I I personally believe Abraham had every intention of slaying that boy. I guarantee if God hadn't have stopped him, he would have done it. He would have done it. I mean, he was willing to obey God. Listen, brother, you got some faith when you'll obey God and give up your son. Or give up. There ain't many people will just say, all right, God, I give him to you. God, I give him my boy. God, I give him my girl. Listen, Abraham said, God, if that's what you want, I love my boy. God, but you gave him to me for a little while, got to have him for a little while, and now God, and he takes that knife like that and rears back, and the Lord said, whoa, and grabs his arm at the last second. And here's something, me. he looks, and there's a ram caught in a thicket. And the Lord said, there's your sacrifice. And he said, really? You're going to let me keep him? And the Lord says, you're going to get to keep him. He cuts him loose, brings the ram over here, slays the ram, and Isaac and Abraham go back home. Abraham's faith was increased. There's your story of faith, people. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, when you really live for the Lord, sometimes the Lord will ask you to do something that you really don't want to do. It's going to cost you something. You hear me tonight? Sometimes God will ask you to do something that will cost you. I mean, you'll think, God, I can't do this. God, is that what I, I got? The, listen, I've been there a few times when I had to make up my mind. Was I going to follow God or was I going to take the easy way out for Danny? And there's been a, many a time when I thought, Lord, I miss, is this what i got to do? Is this my lot? Is this my cup that I've got to drink? And ladies and gentlemen, if God tells you to do something, it'll come out all right. You go ahead and obey God. The greatness of our fears show the littleness of our faith. Number two, an old man conquered a mountain full of giants. Caleb in the book of Judges. I'm telling you, brother, he got up there that day. They was out there that day and Joshua Joshua and Caleb's the only one that lived for the Lord after Moses died, and they got to go in the promised land. And Caleb jumped up there. There's a mountain up there like that, and giants. We'll study about them giants pretty soon. I've been getting me some stuff together. Some of them giants, Goliath and some of them guys, they was just a little grand, great, 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 great grandson. Some of them first ones before the flood, they're big. And brother, if you don't believe it, these buildings over there in Baalback and, and in places that's got solid granite rocks as long as from here, as long as this church and as high as this building, some of them weigh 12,000 tons and they're stacked on top of each other perfectly. And they've been there thousands of years and you couldn't move that with our machinery we got now. 12 thousand, I mean a super duper gigantic crane might be able to drag one of them around, I don't know but they didn't have cranes back in they had some big old boys, <laughs> I mean big ones, that old, the Old Testament said whose height was like the cedars that's what it said Oh, that's symbolic. Huh? I don't know. They found skeletons of them things. Smithsonian don't want you to know that because it contradicts evolution. But brother, there was giants in the earth in those days. Big ones. I mean, gigantic. I mean, that Paul Bunyan, Jack the Beanstalk stuff, that stuff is built upon stuff that really did happen back in the days before the flood. And so they went up there, and everybody said, I ain't going up there. I ain't going up there. And about that time, a little old guy jumped up about that tall. His name was Caleb, 85 years old. 85. 
five years old. Lord, I know people got 40 years old and said, well, I'm just going to have to quit teaching Sunday school, Brother Danny. I can't work in the bus ministry no more. I'm 40. 85 years old. 85, just getting started. You know, Moses didn't start going good till he's 80. And uh, that gives me hope. Hallelujah. Hey, hey man, uh, shut up. Uh, I used to get to go preach youth meeting all the time. Uh, they, for years and years, they said, we got this young preacher going to be with us today. And they said that for years and years and years. And then they started saying, we got this preacher going to be with us today. And now they're just saying, well, old brother Danny's been along a long time. Uh, come on, and, you know, times have changed. But I'm telling you what, old Caleb, he's 85. And they said, nobody ain't going to fight the giants. Nobody can't fight the giants. Everybody's scared Lord have mercy, look at him. I mean, he could take old Shaquille, old Neil, put his head on, hand, uh, foot on his head like that. Get out, boy, you little punk. Get out of here, you bother me. And I'm telling you something, buddy. About that time, old Caleb jumped up there. He might have had a cane. He said, hey, is that a <laughs> he said, that's a giant. I don't say, Lord, Lord, that's Jack the Beanstalk. And the Beanstalk goes all the way up there. And, there was a, and he said, uh, you can't get him. He said, my crackies, I'll go up there and fight him. Uh, let me out of here. He, uh, he wasn't ready to go to no rest home. He wasn't ready to go to no funeral, brother. That old man said, give me that mountain. Give me, Lord, I love that song. I want that mountain. I want that mountain where the milk and honey flows. And, uh, uh, sir, brother, that's what old Caleb did. He said, I may, I may be 85, but I'm just as strong as I ever was. Hallelujah, let me go. And the Lord gave that old boy the victory. 85 years old and conquered the mountain. What's that face you're facing tonight? Might be a good time to rear back and hit it again. I don't know who the oldest person in here is tonight. Might need you to start you a bus ministry, Miss Dot. It's between you and Jeremy. They're cl pretty close, ain't they, Brother Derek? One of y'all, one of y'all three. I don't know who oldest one in here tonight. It might be time for Dot to start her a bus ministry. I'm telling you something. Eighty-five. She's older, than, she's older than Caleb. And brother, that old man, he, he, he stood up and he said, I'm gonna live for God. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Number three, one little soldier attacked a whole army. That was David, 1 Samuel 17. Same thing, same thing. David didn't fight Goliath by might, I guarantee you, if David and Goliath had arm wrestled on a normal day, Lord, his arm would have been way up here and David's like his. He couldn't even reach up there and get his. My Lord, hit us. I mean, you boys like big, strong people? Goliath was nearly 10 feet tall. Eugene would come down from New York City last night and he's up there and he gave his testimony. He's making fun of me. And he said, he said when he heard, first heard me, he preached on tapes all the time, he said, I thought he was 10 feet tall. He said, when I first saw him, he said, I couldn't, is that Danny Castle? I'm sorry to disappoint you, man. I, I, I get 10 feet tall when I'm preaching. Uh, but then I shrink back down when I, in just normal life. Uh, but I'm telling you, brother, that old boy, old David looked at that old boy. He said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, uh, whose armies thou hast defied the living God. And David, listen, young man, all you young boys, listen. David put that rock in that sling, his faith was in the Lord he put that thing in there, he began to sling it like that right there, but he, he killed a lion, he killed a bear, you can do anything God wants you to do you, I said you can do anything God wants you to do, if you'll trust the Lord and put him first you can do anything God wants you to do, God's not interested in your talent God's not interested in your muscles he's not interested in your ability, God wants you to be available and he wants you to believe him, amen Amen. I tell you, brother, I may not be able to do what some can do, but I can trust him, and he knocked down a big giant just using my little sling like that right there. He attacked the whole army. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers, I 
Faith keeps the man who keeps the faith. One soldier. Number four. A godly man walked into a den of lions. I'm telling you, Daniel, in my opinion, one of the greatest men in the Bible. Noah, Daniel, and Job. That's who God used for illustration when he wanted to illustrate a holy man there near, near the end of the Old Testament. He said, though Noah, Daniel, and Job. Remember that? God picked them three men. You ain't going to beat them three men like that. I Probably the greatest men I've ever read about is them and the Apostle Paul and John Wesley. Probably the most godly men I've ever read about. But Noah, Daniel, and Job didn't have a Bible. They just believed God. They didn't have the Bible. They might have had parts of the Scriptures. But they, and we don't even know that for all, for all three of them. But you know what Daniel did? Every day, he prayed, old Daniel prayed, every morning, noon and night. And he got down and prayed, and they passed the law, and they put up things all over town, and the IRS put it out, and they put it on the news. We have passed a new law. Nobody can pray to any other God except our God. And Daniel went down and got down just like he always did, said they can make whatever the law they want to. I'm going to pray, and kept right on praying, and it got him in trouble. And they said anybody who prays to any other God, uh, but our God will be thrown into the den of lions. It didn't say lion's den. See, you can just say, I'm gonna throw somebody in a lion's den. That, damn, there might not be nothing in there. But a den of lions, a lion's in there. So they took Daniel. They said, Daniel! Yes, sir. Is it true that you have been praying to God and breaking the law, this, this will help you on these days when they start passing laws. Listen, people, we've had it long and good in this country, but the day may be coming when they start passing laws against stuff being you believe. It's already coming, it's starting in California, putting the pressure on. Listen, they're going to make it a hate crime to preach against certain sins. I mean, it's coming. If the Lord don't come first, I may not see it, but these kids in here will see the day when you can't say certain things are sin or you'll be charged with hate. And Daniel, stand there. God, give us the grace. I hope you're strong enough. I hope you've got your faith in the right place so that if it does come, you'll stand. Don't chicken out and say, well, maybe it's all right. I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. Daniel said, I prayed three times a day. I'm gonna still pray three times a day. I know I'm right. If I'm going the lines then, I'm going the lines then. They said, you're going in the den of lines. And he said, get him, boys. You're not gonna defy me like that. That made that king so mad. He said, throw him in there. He said, throw him in there. Can you imagine all them guys grabbing Daniel like that? I don't believe he put up a fight. I believe he just stood there. I mean, he had done Red Fox's Book of Martyrs. Hadn't been wrote yet, but he knew it was coming. And uh, I mean, he, uh, Daniel knew he's going to have all them bad things. And here they put him in there like that. They opened up that pit. They, them things was hungry too, buddy. They kept them starving in there. And down he went. Can you imagine hitting the bottom of that pit? There's a big old, there's Leo. And over there's Cleo. And, and there's, there's uh, that big one like Linus. Uh, I mean, them with them big old heads like that right there. I'm telling you, brother, some of them things jump from here, that pulpit, them things that tall, weighs seven, eight, nine hundred pounds, and there he was. Daniel looked down, and there was all of them lines around him. I can imagine Daniel said, Lord, I've done what you wanted me to do. God, I don't know what's going to happen, but God, I'd rather die than to give in and worship their false gods. If this is the way i got to go, this is the way i got to go. Daniel didn't have a New Testament. He didn't know about the New Jerusalem. He didn't know about all the, the blood of Jesus or nothing, all the good stuff that men you know about. But you know what Daniel had? He had faith in a God that allowed that to happen. Listen, I'm preaching this tonight because you may find yourself in a place like that at work. They may all turn against you where you work. It may come your turn to stand. And old Daniel stood there like that right there. I can imagine. The king said, cover it up. I can't stand to look at this. Put the lid on it. He went up there and he went to sleep or tried to go to sleep. Went to bed that night and all he could imagine is Daniel's bones and his blood there when his head and cracking his skull and them big old lines and they started walking around him like that. Mm. Mm. 
you get to, you get one arm, I get the other arm. You get the other arm. And, and Daniel said, all right, let's get this over with. God, help me now, Lord. Help me. God, give me grace. God, help me. And about that time, one of them starts to come toward him like that, and he goes, and King him out. And God, what did he do? He got luck, Joe. He said, try not to have a blood of him. I to bless him. I'll take that mouth open. Bible, that's what the Bible said. God sent his angel people. Shut the lion's mouth. Like wired them, like a dentist wires you up. <laughs> Daniel says, ha, 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 what about this? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, the Lord give me victory. Well, it's about time to turn in. Come here, man. Made him lay down right there. Put him in that fur, brother, in that big mane, laid back there. Come here, man. Lay on my feet and get them warm here. I laid another one on his feet. Meanwhile, up at the palace, the king couldn't sleep a wink. He is up there tossing and turning. I mean, he had you know, people dropping grapes in his mouth and fanning him like that, you know, with them big palm tree limbs and everything else. He couldn't sleep a wink. And Daniel down there sleeping like a baby, brother. I mean, I mean, he'd be doing better than Frankie uh, the first couple of hours every night. I, I'm telling you, here come, here come the king, brother. He couldn't, sleep, he couldn't sleep a wink. You know what that means? You're better off, brother, in the lion's den, right with God, than you are in a king's palace uh, without the Lord. And and brother old Daniel, uh, the next day, the king said, I dread this, but I'm, I'm just going to go look. Take the lid off that thing. And they pulled that lid back and said, Is you God able to help you, Daniel? He said, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. How are you, king? You look like you ain't slept. Wait. And they got him out of there. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what Daniel did that? Daniel didn't do that because he is educated. Daniel didn't do that because he was talented. He didn't do that because he could play a harp or a piano. He did that because he believed God. And everybody in here can believe God. I'll just say a couple of things here and I'm done. I was going to talk to you about Peter, a fisherman that walked on water. Do you realize what an advantage that could be to a fisherman? I seen a boat the other day, one of them glass boats, they have a glass bottom, you know, where you can look and see. What if you could just walk out there? Mm, walk over here, you know. Walk over here. This is water. Now, are you walking over here, fish a little bit? But, I mean, Peter, you know, we give Peter a hard time, and everybody say, well, he doubted. He walked further than the rest of them did. He's the only one who had enough faith to get out there and take a couple of steps, amen. Old Peter got up there, and here come the Lord walking on water, and he was one of these guys. I mean, old Peter, he's going to do something. I mean, you, he's going to do something, right or wrong, he's going to do something. He wasn't just going to sit and let the world go by. And old Peter said, is that really you, Lord? If it is, can I do that? And the Lord said, yeah, come on. And Peter goes, see you later, boy. They say, yeah, you're crazy, son. And old Peter goes out like that, steps that thing over there, Oh, he held me. Ha, 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 Look here. Woo. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo. Watch this, boys. He started going down. He took his eyes off the Lord. He started going down. As soon as he looked at Jesus, as hard as this concrete underneath this carpet, as soon as he put his eyes on the Lord, that's what you do and I do. As long as you keep your eyes on the Lord, you're going to be all right. As soon as you get your eyes off the Lord, you start going down. Boy, I like that old, old story that them preachers said there's was, was a Baptist preacher and a Methodist preacher and a Presbyterian preacher, you know, them jokes they tell. Uh, and they was all out on Monday morning trying to brag, out brag the other one of what happened yesterday. And they was out there fishing, and there's about, about 200 yards out there in the lake. About that time, the Presbyterian preacher said, I, I forgot my lunch box, and just stepped out of that boat and just walked across that water just pretty as you please uh, over there like that, and, and went your lunch box. That, that Baptist preacher went. About that time, that Methodist preacher said, you know, I left my tackle box, my bait, and everything over there. I'll be right back. Got out and just walked on that water just pretty as you please. They was both sitting over there, and that Baptist preacher said, they ain't gonna outdo me. If them wicked, low-down, compromising reprobates I can walk on water, I can too. So he took one step and went, <laughs> down he's just swinging little like this, you know, about ready to drown. And they're like, sitting over there saying, we ought to tell that fool where them rocks are. <laughs> 
<laughs> they, they wasn't really walking on water. And I, that's the way, that's the way, uh, that's the way he was. But, but Peter really did. I mean, he really, he really stood on that. Stood on it. By faith. Now, I'm going to close with saying this. God can work out your problem. And he knows and he cares about what you're going through. And your job ain't to figure it out. Your job is to trust him and do right. Your job ain't to finagle and politic and twist and cut corners and try to work things. Your job is to trust him and do right. I'm, I'm marriage counsel a lot. I have this week. And you know what I tell every one of them? Trust God and do the right thing. And he'll, he'll work things out for you. Trust God and do the right thing. He'll work things out for you. It's like this. I heard it put this way. One of the best ways I've ever heard it put. When you're on a boat, Every man in here, and most of you girls, have been out in a little boat on the water, and you got oars. You ever been in a canoe or just a little John boat, and you have to row it by oars? How many's done that, right? Well, just about everybody in here. Now, you got one in this hand and one in this hand, and you go, or you go, funny looking on the internet I read. I'm doing my I'm doing my aerobics but you know what uh, if you just do this you ain't going nowhere if you row with one hand you know what you're going to do around 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 if you row with this hand that's all you're going to do you have to go both that's faith and works faith works faith works faith, if all you got is faith you ain't going nowhere Faith without works is dead. Right or without the left or, you ain't going to get nowhere. If you just got works, you ain't going nowhere. Just around. Faith without works is dead. Isn't that a good illustration? Isn't that a good way of saying faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. You get to the other side, faith works. Faith works. Faith works. Faith works. And every one of these people demonstrated their faith by their works. And that's what we need to do. Faith that works. The song says, I care not today what tomorrow may bring a shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm safe in his sheltering arm, I'm living by faith and I feel no alarm. Let's stand our head for prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Amen. Maybe you're facing a situation, financial, physical, Spiritual, marital, and it's pretty rough. And you just say, Lord, I'm going to believe you and trust you. Come on, let's get down here and pray tonight. Let's just get down here on our knees and pray. Lord, by faith, by faith, I want to I wanna trust you to get me through this. By faith, Lord, I, I can't do it. I can't do it in myself. Uh, my works is not enough. And my faith is not enough. But faith wrought with my works, and by works, my faith is made perfect. You do that tonight? Will you do that tonight? Amen. Hallelujah, y'all. That's good. That's good. Thank God the altar's full tonight. Maybe there's others. Maybe there's others. I don't know what you may be facing, but if, if you'll just say, Lord, by faith, by faith, Lord, help me to trust you. Help me to trust you. My faith is weak. Lord, it don't take but just enough as a mustard seed, y'all. It, it don't take a whole lot. You can move a mountain with a, with a mustard seed. Mount Mitchell, Grandfather Mountain with a mustard seed. It ain't going to take much for what you're facing. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Lord, I'm going to trust you. I've got prayer requests tonight, and I want y'all to pray for my prayer requests, and I'll pray for yours. 
Let's do that tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you tonight, Lord, I thank you so much. Lord, that you made it, made it level for all of us. Lord, you made us all equal that we can just believe you. And Lord, you said Abraham believed God and it's counted him righteousness. Lord, we believe you tonight, Lord. Help our unbelief. Help our doubt. Lord, uh, remove our doubt. Lord, let our faith be strengthened. Let every person in here tonight, faith be strengthened. I don't know who up here on this altar tonight is going through the worst burden or trial or time of heartache, but I pray that you would give them victory right now in Jesus' name. God, give them victory right now and help them, Lord, to face this week in faith to trust you like Daniel did, like, like David did, like Abraham did, like Caleb did, like Peter did like others did in the Bible. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm still praying tonight.